Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back to my channel. We're kind of on an in-between series here and um, the lighting is terrible. I do apologize. The art room is not set up yet, but I am making a holder for these fancy um, cut scissors and I just thought that I would bring you along and show you what I came up with because I've been trying to figure out for a couple days how am I going to store these that's going to make me happy. So I used to store them in this bag right here and the problem was is I couldn't I couldn't see exactly what everything was. You know, I have 22 pairs of these scissors and so they were all jumbled up in there and um it just was, it was not really, and then I had a little shelf to stuff them into, and they just barely fit in that shelf, and it worked for a while, but you always had to dump them out to figure out which pair of scissors you wanted. I wanted to be able to see the decorative part to see what each, you know, how they all have this on them, to see what each one of them was, kind of just at a glance. So I thought, well, I had seen people showing these from the Dollar Tree, and I thought, well, maybe they'll work. I went in, I looked at them, and I thought, these outside edges look too small, but this middle one looks like it would be big enough. Maybe I could do that. So I went ahead and I picked up these, and um, in putting them in there, they fit okay. You, you can put them right next to each other, but then you can't see the decorative part at all. And you, you have to go, so every other hole... So I would need two of them. They don't fit in there the best. You kind of have to push them a little bit once you get them in there or they're just kind of flopping over. You know, they don't fit down in there very well. Um, the decorative part winds up being barely visible here and a little bit here because it's being blocked. And it just, I would need to have two of these on my desk and it wasn't pretty and it really didn't work that well because they only went down just a little bit. I thought about cutting these out. I thought about cutting the legs shorter and putting it back together so it didn't look so funny with them sticking way up here and having all of this empty space underneath. I thought what could I put like under there a little bowl of something you know like to, to store something under there so it didn't look so funny, being that they only went that far. That just did not make me happy. And so then I decided, we did the paintbrush holder the other day. This one, I, well, I did it, and I didn't show you how I did it, just kind of told you. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing with the scissors. I had a big piece of, big long piece of foam like this, and so I thought, well... I could put them on there. I could stand them up and then I can be able to see a lot of the design and if I put all the designs facing one way, I'd be able to scan through them. 22 would have made it way too long, so I decided to divide it in half and do 11. Now, the piece of styrofoam I had was this long, which was way long enough. And so I just started, I don't want to ruin this piece because it's a big piece, so I'm going to show you, this is what I cut off the piece I actually used. Um, so I'm going to show you how I put them in there, but what I did was I just looked at the decorative side, and then I didn't actually measure, you could measure 11 little spots to push them into, I just kind of, I put them on an angle because I know I want to put them on both sides. Also, um, if I put them this way, so here I could fit two in this amount of space, so this much space. But if I put them next to each other, and you have to have at least a little gap so that you can fit them in, it would take up more than this much space. So it would have been a really long, I'm not even sure I could have fit them on this really long piece, putting them like this. But if I put them on an angle, um, I can fit a whole lot more. So I just made sure that I put the decorative part all facing the same way. And I just took my scissors and I just kind of went, okay, I don't want to be too close to the edge. So I will put the first one back. Maybe, you know, you want to leave enough space here so when you push into your styrofoam, you're not squishing the edge of it. And I just took them and I just kind of pushed them down. 
And then I just took the next one and just kind of said, well, that looks like a, about a nice space between them and everything. Looks like I'm about the same distance from the front. And I pushed it down. Now, see that one, that one got to the point where it wants to push itself back out because there is a piece of styrofoam in the way. And so I just took a little pokey tool and I just kind of broke that styrofoam like that because it was just the styrofoam wasn't giving way and then again put it on an angle and give it a push there it kind of broke through I could feel that and I could hear it so and then I kind of made them all about the same height I went all the way down till I had 11 then I turned my styrofoam around and did the same thing but what I did was these scissors come down right here so I went over just a little bit I didn't come all the way to the middle of the two that would have put me here I just came over a little bit from this one actually the first pair would have been a little bit on this side oops and what I did was if you just offset it just barely put it again on the same angle then what happens is this pair lines up with that pair now it's a little bit see it hit that and that was because the styrofoam pushed it so I just kind of pulled it back this way a little bit you don't want to make your hole too big to make it too loose and I'm not sure how long this is going to last because I haven't really you know tried it yet as far as you know how long it's going to last so this one I put just just a little bit inside this one if we look at it see this one is over to the right just a little bit so I'm going to make my next one just a little bit to the right of this one and then what's going to happen is just a little to the right of this one on the same angle and then this one would line up with the next one that was right here if this one this is too close to the edge to put it in but if this one was here see then those would line up like that so I did that all the way down till I had all 11 I was gonna show you and this is you're not even gonna get this all in the picture but I tried this board here that I had and this board is I don't really have but here's a regular ruler that's 12 so it's 14 just kind of 14 by 19 I tried lining them across the long way and letting them hang down they didn't fit I couldn't fit all 22 of them on there if I put it this way this way I could put five across and then fit four in between them and then five across and four in between them which kind of hung a little bit off the end and then I would have still had to put four hooks in the bottom to hold the last pairs so it you know it really was not a good fit so I, I tried a lot of different things but and this board like I said I just gave you the size it's really big and I would have had to hang it on the wall and it still really wasn't the right size so that's where I decided on this idea so here's my first 11 and that's how they are though I already have the holes on the other side for the others I'm gonna grab those show you what I was talking about with the and because these scissors have this like shape to them it kind of makes the holes funny shaped and again I do apologize for the lighting see how they're kind of funny shaped so and all of these scissors on this side each one of these scissors has its design right here so you can see it really pretty well and then on the other side as I put them in the design now faces this way so so you'd be able to see them and then these ones fit in like this Let's see which side the design is on 
put these in so you can get an idea of what I was talking about. Okay, so see how the scissors kind of line up like that? And so it doesn't take as much room if I were to have put them this way, both pairs, that piece of styrofoam would have had to be wider. So that just works out really well. It looks nice. I like the way that it looks and it really fits well. So now that's not going to hold them real well for a long time. Now the next thing that I did was after I pushed them all in, there were little like balls of styrofoam or pieces of styrofoam that were kind of stuck. So I just kind of went in there and just went ahead and sometimes you just pulled it out. Sometimes I did that, just kind of smacked it out until I got some, some of that out. There was no perfect bottom, perfect sides. It's styrofoam. But just anything that looked like it might be in the way, I just kind of pulled it out like that and, um, and did that to all of the holes. Then what I did to make it sturdier, because it's not really that sturdy, just as styrofoam, and like I said, I don't know how long this is going to last, but we will eventually find out. Okay, but then what I did was I put um, masking tape on the right cross the hole. Then what I did was, you can kind of see when you put, this is a little bit wider. This is, I believe, inch and a half. Yep, this is inch and a half masking tape. And so I just kind of, oh, my tripod's a little bit in the way. I just kind of lined it up. And when I got really close to the styrofoam, I could see the holes. And so I just kind of centered the masking tape over the holes so that I had a little masking tape on each side of the hole. Now, if you really only have the one inch masking tape, you, you can use that and just, you know, use two pieces. It's not that big of a deal. If you have the one and a half or two inch masking tape or something, I figured it would be better that it was all one width because I'm gonna cut it and put a hole in it, obviously. So I thought two strips of masking tape would be coming together in the middle and it might kind of come apart. So, but if you don't have it, then you use what you have and see how you can get it to work. Then I used an X-Acto knife, which I don't have here because I had to do something for my husband and took it away. But I used an X-Acto knife and I just cut. I'm going to see if this will help me. Not really. But I just cut on an angle. There. I cut on an angle like just like this. Here, you're not going to be able to see it, maybe. This is the hole right here. So you can see a hole right here. So I took the X-Acto knife and just went from the top of the hole, and I just went right down on an angle to the bottom of the hole, just like this. Okay. Then I took the pair of scissors and just pushed them in there, like that. And so that's what I did all the way along. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another piece of masking tape on top of this and do it again. I'm going to do a piece of masking tape down the middle. I will put masking tape around the edges, the bottom, the whole thing, um, because I want it to be really sturdy because these are heavy. So, and when you pick it up, you're going to want to be careful. Now you can take a piece of cardboard and put it a nice sturdy piece on the bottom that will help keep it sturdy because you don't want it to break. If you're going to just put it somewhere where it's pretty much just going to sit um, and you're not going to be moving it a lot, you don't have to worry about it, you know, being as sturdy. But you never know, so it's better to make it sturdy from the start than, um, than to have it break in half and have to fix it because styrofoam is hard to glue. Um, there is styrofoam glue that you can use, but if you put any kind of a... Um, solvent based glue on styrofoam it will melt so like elmer's glue will work but uh fabri-tac i bet you will melt it by the smell of fabri-tac i'm pretty sure that that is like a a solvent based so so i'm just using the tape because that works well once i get i'm going to put either two or three layers of 
tape on here. And and I didn't cut around that hole for a reason. I wanted to just put put it on. And the reason I did it on an angle was because those the shape of these are kind of funny. So I figured that gave me, I don't know, just just because I did. Um, but don't don't cut around the hole. Don't try and cut the the masking tape out. Just cut it on an angle, and then once you get it cut from top to bottom, just push your scissors in there through the masking tape and that will push the masking tape where it needs to be and it will be down inside a little bit and um, it will make the edges of the hole stronger that's why I didn't cut around it because I want to make a really nice strong edge to the masking tape so I'm going to put more masking tape on here I'm going to paint it so that it matches my um, brush holder from the other day and then I will be back to show you what it looks like when it's finished and let you know exactly how many layers of tape I decided to use and how I finished it off so I'll be back in just a second okay I am back and it's all done so um, it turned out really well it's a little too big to quite get the whole thing on screen but it's pretty close here's one end and here's the other so um, I like the way that it turned out. I put two layers of masking tape. I put one down the center and then I put another layer of masking tape on each side where the, um, where the scissors pushed through. Um, I put masking tape all the way around the outside. I did put masking tape on the bottom. Um, I haven't put anything else on the bottom but I think I will maybe put a board or a piece of cardboard or something else because it is really quite heavy um, and it works really well I do like the way that it turned out after I painted it um, I put a layer of water glue on it and water glue is what I use instead of using like Mod Podge or something like that and um, and that's just two parts glue, Elmer's glue, white PVA glue, to one part water. And so I put that on there, and I painted inside the holes, and I did do the water glue inside the holes. But, and these scissors, and I can't, let me see if, one of, if I can read it on one of the lighter colored ones. Um, this is B-Y-C-I-N is the name of this scissor on here and it has this logo which looks like it might be a bird inside a frame not really sure these ones when they shut they don't have a huge lip here and they fit in here very nicely and just to show you though they don't all work as well um, these ones kind of this one is called this one is I think it's Provocraft, it's PC, and um, some of them um, kind of catch on where I had pushed the, um, where I pushed the, what, masking tape, where I pushed the masking tape down, because it only goes down a little ways, um, it's catching on those. It seems to have a little bit of a bigger or s for some reason because the other ones don't hardly catch at all. Um, and those are all on this other side. But these Provocraft ones, some of them, if the hole is really, really solid, um, you know, and there's nothing coming out a little bit on the edges, they're not doing too bad. But any place where there's a little bit of the masking tape kind of sticking out, um, that one's good. So actually it's getting better as we go. Yeah, this one right here, it just caught the masking tape. And so what I am going to do, because I do have like a few of those, this one is catching also, and I don't want to wreck it. Um, that one's really got itself stuck on there. Um, I think what I'm going to do is kind of lift that up, use a very fine tip uh, glue bottle, and I'm going to put a little bit of... Um, tacky glue under there because tacky glue dries a little faster and um, a little bit stronger than just plain Elmer's so I'm going to put a little tacky glue under there and push it in and then I think what I'll do is I'll just take like 
just something different, you know, like maybe this, or I was really thinking two, um, like ballpoint pens because it kind of almost has two little round spots and stick that in there while the uh, glue is drying. And then I think it will be much better because it's only a few of them where the masking tape is sticking out a little over the edge. But I wanted to show you that in case that happens to you. And this one is catching too. So I think there's about six or so of them that are really kind of catching and pretty much mostly only this type of scissors. So it has something to do maybe possibly just with the the shape of the, the point of that scissor. And, and for some reason it's catching. Even though the others, they really do look... They look a lot alike, but for some reason these are catching and these are not. So, but I'm very happy with this. I do hope that you, uh, if you needed a way to store your scissors and you try one like this, I hope that it goes really well for you and that you enjoy it. I really like the way that it looks. I like the amount of room that I need to use for all of these scissors, which is not a ton. I like that this will fit on. I have do have a skinny shelf that I think I'm going to put this on and um, it will fit on there really nicely. So that is just what I wanted to show you. I thought since I was doing it, instead of just telling you about it, like when I did the one um, for the brushes, I also uh, put water glue on this today while I was water gluing this one because I had just painted it. But I like to put water glue after I build a project because it just kind of, it helps make it a little more sturdy, hold it together, gives it a touch of a shine, and um, so I usually just do that. So, but there we go. That is my um, decorative scissor holder. And I hope that if you needed a way to store it, that this helps you out somewhat. Thank you very much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.